I've only been making Pokemon Go videos for about a month and a half now and don't really do news videos normally, but this news is so exciting that I felt the need to cover it, so here you go. Gen 4 has finally been officially announced to be coming to Pokemon Go. I mean, it's not surprising, but it's still exciting. We got an official trailer announcing Gen 4 earlier today using the cool in the real world stuff that Pokemon Go, you know, they should just make like a feature length film of just Pokemon running around in the real, real world like they do for those Niantic commercials. They're just, they're so good. At the time of filming this video, we do not currently have a date for when Gen 4 will arrive in Pokemon Go, but I have a strong suspicion that it's not gonna happen until after Mewtwo leaves raids on October 23rd. So, might be by the end of this month, but might be a little bit after that because they'll probably do a Halloween event. But in addition to Gen 4 coming to Pokemon Go, there are some big, just overarching mechanics changes to Pokemon Go that at first glance, seem like they're gonna be really good things. First off, we have this section on changes to Pokemon migration and behavior. As you explore the world of Pokemon Go, the following changes will affect the Pokemon that appear around you. Moving forward, the weather feature will have a reduced effect on the rate at which Pokemon appear. This one is kind of a mixed bag for me because on one hand, certain weathers can make some really interesting rare Pokemon show up. Like, I got a shiny Shuppet last week because it was foggy weather and there were Shuppets everywhere. And it was awesome. But on the other hand, partly cloudy weather, which is a very prominent weather in my area at least, makes it just so everything is a crappy normal type, like Sentret, Zigzagoon, or Rattata. It's just, it's garbage. No one wants to play in that. So the fact that that's probably going to be less bad in the future is a good thing. Next it says, as you explore a given area, you will notice that a greater variety of Pokemon species will appear over time and at different rates. This is an intriguing one. I think this is basically them saying, hey, we're gonna make it so there's fewer crappy normal types, so you actually want to play the game. You know, it's just, it's gonna, we're gonna spice things up, which, how could that possibly be a bad thing? I think that's going to be exciting. Also, it specifically says over time and at different rates, which I think possibly means that there's going to be changing spawn rates depending even on the day of the week. It's not just gonna be like specific nest migrations. There could just be like rotating days of what Pokemon are showing up more in a certain location. And the last one says certain areas such as parks and nature reserves will now contain more varied Pokemon species which also seems exciting because it means certain parks are gonna be hot spots for even crazier Pokemon Go spawns, which is probably gonna make them a lot more crowded, but you know, it's gonna be a fun motivator to get out and go to a nice pretty park rather than just walking around in your suburbs. Although that'll probably be less convenient. But regardless, I mean, more variety of spawns in any locations cannot be a bad thing. And then we have this big section on changes to Pokemon effectiveness in battle. The in-game battle mechanics are being rebalanced. You may notice some of the following changes in the coming weeks. So they're, 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 they're doing a big overhaul on just the stats and CP and battle mechanics of everything, which is honestly surprising to me. CP values will be adjusted going forward to improve game balance. So I think what they're trying to do is make it so that, you know, there's not just one best attacker of each type, that just like makes all the other ones useless. Like, you know, on Moltres Day, it was like, use your Smackdown Stone Edge Tyranitars, you know, only use Golems if you don't have enough Tyranitars. I think they're trying to move away from that, you know, just a couple Pokemon are used all the time, which I think is good, because we'll get to see some more fun variety in people's teams, and not just Tyranitars and Machamps everywhere. HP values will be adjusted to close the gap between Pokemon with high and low HP. So I think that means that Basically, they're gonna nerf Blissey. <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna like make it so that Pokemon's outlasting abilities and battles are gonna be closer together? I don't know, that's gonna be a weird one to see how exactly that affects things. To me, it just seems like eight Blissey and Chansey are gonna get nerfed. Pokemon defense and stamina values will be rebalanced, allowing the Pokemon with high defensive stats to be valuable by outlasting opponents in battle rather than these Pokemon taking too long to defeat. So this is an interesting one. It's making it so defensive Pokemon are actually more effective at winning because they can outlast opponents rather than just like being an annoyance because they take longer to knock out. So defensive Pokemon are gonna be a lot more useful in gyms because they might actually win because maybe the timer is gonna be less. You know, maybe because their defense is gonna get boosted, you actually could run out of time even with the current timer. So I think that's gonna be interesting. And I think 
Taking over gyms is about to get a lot more annoying. But then here it says defense values have also been slightly reduced for most Pokemon. Changes like these will help narrow the gap between Pokemon with highest defensive stats and other Pokemon, which weirdly seems to be like contradicting the prior one. Like the other one says, oh, we're gonna make it so defensive Pokemon are more valuable, or we're gonna lower the defensive stats for everyone. So it's, it's kind of confusing. I'm no expert on game balancing, but I think it's gonna be interesting. I, I just, I do think that Taking over gyms is gonna get more frustrating because the defensive Pokemon are gonna be better, but it also might make the battles go quicker because all the defense stats for Pokemon are gonna be lowered. I don't know, it's gonna get weird. One thing I kinda do hope they do, although I don't really think they will because they haven't mentioned it, is make defensive legendaries useful. Uh, if they're making it so defensive Pokemon are more useful, maybe they'll be more helpful in raids, which is one thing, but they're still like, would be, like the Regis would be really good gym defenders, but they can't go in gyms. So one thing I'd honestly like to see at some point is making it so that like a gym can hold one legendary Pokemon at a time. That would be dope, but probably not, because that might still be kind of OP. Game balancing is hard. Good on them for like, trying to figure this out. Well, that pretty much covers all the Pokemon Go news for today. I am extremely excited. I've been saving up so much candy for all the Gen 4 evolution. It's gonna have some Rhyperiors and Mammoth Swines and it's gonna be awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to drop a like. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. I make Pokemon Go videos pretty regularly and I'm sure you would enjoy them. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.